Good morning, and thank you for joining us here at St. Martha's Episcopal Church in Papillion, Nebraska for this 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Please join us in singing the verses 1, 2, and 6 of All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. God be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I am the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
I am the Lord. Please join me in the psalm on page four. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tendal, tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God. Amen. 
I never knew how technologically advanced Moses was. He used the first tablet to connect to the cloud. God said to Moses, take two tablets and call me in the morning. God sang to Moses in heaven, Moses, this is Steve Jobs. He's going to upgrade your tablets. I can't claim credit for any of these. An easy Google search produces a variety of cartoons and jokes related to the giving of the law at Mount Sinai to the group of slaves God rescued from Egypt. The image of a white-haired old man trooping up and down the mountain coming back down with two engraved tablets of stone is so ingrained into our culture that almost every form of popular culture and social media has satirized it. But when a biblical scene is so familiar to us, sometimes we miss the point. And in the case of Moses bringing the law to the 12 tribes gathered in the wilderness around their holy mountain, we sometimes forget how much that law was a gift to a group of people who had been so violently abused. And centuries of simplistic Christian teaching, law bad, Jesus good, helps us misunderstand why it was so important that the law was established as a baseline for the community that would become the people of Israel. It's easy to forget why the Hebrew slaves cried out to God in the first place. Their lives meant nothing to the Pharaoh in Egypt. Unrestrained by any law, the narcissistic Pharaoh made up new rulings on a whim. Frightened by the presence of these foreigners, he enslaved them, ordered the midwives to murder their male children, worked them endlessly without any time off and with increasingly fewer tools to work with. Pharaoh thought he was the center of the universe, tried to stamp out the pesky Hebrew slaves while getting the most free labor out of them that he could. With so much violence turned on them, the slaves turned on each other. When you are treated as if you are not fully human, you tend to forget that those around you are fully human too. So God knew these former slaves needed laws. They started to build their community in the wilderness. And the baseline of the law is this, transforming your relationship with God transforms your relationship with each other. We see this in the reading from Leviticus, where each ethical of commandment of behavior with fellow humans is completed by the phrase, I am the Lord. If we love the Lord our God with all our hearts and souls and minds, we'll love our neighbors as ourselves, living as if we are not the center of the universe, but our God is. Jesus knew that the law of Moses was liberating. Jesus also knew that any law in the hands of humans could be corrupted. Justice wielded by the few over the many, the rich over the poor, insiders versus outsiders, can become injustice. That was the call of the prophets. And religious traditions meant to support our understanding of God can become weapons when wrongly used against each other. So Jesus calls the people of God not to a new idea, but to an ancient one. Our vertical relationship with God is deeply connected to our horizontal relationship with each other. The more we understand that God loves each one of us, the more we understand that we are both fallible, broken, imperfect creatures, and that each of us, every single flavor of human being, bears the image and imprint of God. Now, many of our sibling Protestant denominations celebrate today as Reformation Sunday. Martin Luther wanted to debate the religious laws of the day, and he accidentally sparked a religious revolution. Luther understood that the law alone is not transformative. 
It is the grace of that unrelenting love of God for God's people, the love that called them out of slavery into this new life-giving way. That is the bedrock on which we form community. So let the Lord your God lead you out of whatever it is you are enslaved to. Love every imperfect and beautiful part of you, the you that is created in God's image. Love your flawed and beautiful neighbors, also created in God's image, the ones that are easy to love and the ones that are not so easy to love. And with everything that is you, every piece of you, heart, soul, and mind, love the Lord your God, who poured God's very self into our humanity and gave it all on the cross for us. Amen. Amen. In response to the God who loves us, let us say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of the name. One being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, 
number of announcements this morning, uh, so I'm going to take them in chronological order. Uh, first, uh, next Sunday is the Feast of All Saints, and so I would invite you to send names into the church, to the church email, and we're going to have a visual display of the names of our beloved who have gone on before us, uh, so that we can worship with the great cloud of witnesses that continues to pray for us. So please get those names to Angela by this Wednesday. Secondly, I want to thank everyone who has already given coats or money to the coat drive. There um, have been some very generous donations, some sacrificial donations. Uh, we thank you for each one of those coats that we are going to be able to give. Uh, so those need to be into the church. And this is a hard deadline, not a squishy deadline. Um, we have a hard deadline of this coming Friday at noon so we can get them to the city of La Vista because they are going to uh, get them washed and sorted Monday, November 2nd. So Friday at noon, coats at the church, please. After church today, after this service, we are going to hold our outdoor service at 11, but you all get to stay in your cars. We figured out how to do a virtual conference call via Zoom. And so Deacon Wes and I will be in the vestibule and you all get to stay in your cars and dial in. That number is posted on the front door of the church, and we'll also have cards and other signs for you if you did not find that information in your Friday email. Also in your Friday email, there was a poll for a date for a Zoom conversation for those who want to talk about the future of children and youth ministry here at St. Martha, so please go find that in your email and click on the poll and click the days that you could meet via Zoom. Wednesday evening, are you still with me? That's a lot. Wednesday evening, 6.30, we'll be having a Zoom presentation by me as a kickoff for a four Wednesday series on the prayer book. And I'm going to be doing uh, the history of the prayer book, which has all kinds of twists and turns. So. Join me at 6.30 on Zoom, and we will record it, so if you're not able to join us, you can watch it later. And last but not least, thank you to everyone who came out. It was below freezing when we got started yesterday morning, and frankly, I'm not sure it warmed up above freezing while we were out here, but thank you for being out. All those who trimmed trees and pulled weeds and pulled branches and all those things that got done yesterday, the grounds looked very lovely. Thank you very much. Now live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing be with you always. Amen. We are singing the first three verses of the Canticle of the Sun. <laughs> 